Hello ladies and gents and welcome to another edition of Battle News. Plenty of information and content to get through in this one, so I'm going to be as concise as possible and give you guys all the good stuff that you want to know. Kicking things off this week, we finally get to see some footage of Battlefield 4 running on next-gen hardware. IGN have posted a camera video of uh, someone playing the game on a PS4 at the Tokyo Game Show. Not direct capture, of course, you can't see all the details, but you can sort of see, yeah, it looks like Battlefield 4. It's running smooth, the graphics look fine, and it's no big deal, guys. Everyone was like, oh my god. BF4 on PS4 sucks. It doesn't. It looks fine. It's Frostbite 3. It's a nice looking game. And most importantly, it's 64 players at 60 FPS. To see the full video, I've put the link in the description. Go and check it out. Hopefully, we'll get some direct capture footage coming up pretty soon. Stay on the lookout for that, and I'm sure we'll get to see some. Next up, the official dates for the Battlefield 4 beta have been announced. October the 1st is the start of the exclusive beta. There's three ways to get into this one. You've got to have pre ordered the Battlefield 4 Dulux Edition or be a Battlefield 3 Premium member, or be a registered owner of the Medal of Honor Warfighter Limited Edition or Digital Deluxe Edition. If you haven't done any of those three things, then don't worry. On October the 4th, you can get access to the open beta, and this is for everyone. All you gotta do is sign in on your Xbox or your PS3, or even on your PC on Origin, and just download it. Simple as that. I'm super excited for the beta, guys. It's only like two weeks away. It's gonna be massive, and it's gonna be great playing with and against you guys. I'm really looking forward to it. Next up, the minimum and recommended PC requirements for Battlefield 4 have been officially released by DICE. Recommended is as follows, Windows 8, obviously if you've got Windows 8 you're going to have DX11.1, which apparently gives you a small performance increase in Battlefield 4 and other games due to some new instructions on the CPU or something, I don't know all the details about it, but there you go, Windows 8 is recommended. The processor has got to be an AMD 6 core or an Intel quad core, pretty standard nowadays for a gaming PC. 8 gigs of memory, again, standard. Graphics card 7870 if you're on the AMD camp or an Nvidia GTX 660 if you like to fight for the green camp. You're also going to need 30 gigabytes free of hard drive space to install Battlefield 4. 30 gig is a lot compared to a lot of other games, but BF4 is quite a big one. So yeah, just deal with it and uh, clean up some hard drive space, you'll be fine. Minimum requirements are pretty standard, it's an Intel Core 2 Duo or an AMD Athlon X2, 4GB of memory and the graphics card 3870 or an 8800 GT. Not really surprised at the minimum or the recommended specifications. Um, you're not going to need a BCPC to play Battlefield 4 on decent settings. If you've got like a mid-range gaming system, I think you're going to be perfectly fine. Obviously, you're not going to be able to play with uh, all the bells and whistles on at 1080p if you want at least 30 FPS. But I think if you've got an average system, then you're going to do good. There's also been a new trailer released for the game. Rolly the Poly and his video team have been working their magic and gone ahead and put together an absolute banger of a video game trailer. When I saw this for the first time, I was just screaming like a little fangirl. It was pretty awesome and hyped me up even more for the game. Plenty of new and interesting stuff in here too. Most importantly, we get to see three new maps I think we saw in there. The first one is Operation Locker. Is this gonna be the new Metro? We've seen a top-down view of this map and it looks very linear and very tight-packed. Infantry-only combat in there. Doesn't really seem to be any vehicles floating around. So I think this one's gonna be very popular. Outdoors, this is actually gonna be a snowy environment. You can tell by the icicles and the frost on the screen there. The next one we saw is based off the Arcebo Observatory. As you can see there in the game, it looks absolutely mental and you can drive up the side on quad bikes. Here's a couple of photos of what it's actually based off in real life. Look at that, it just looks so cool. In real life, it's actually an observatory and it has a 1,000 feet radio telescope, which makes it the largest single aperture telescope in the world. And if you actually look for the telescope, then you can see some dinosaurs on a different planet. Playing Battlefield 4. The third map we got to see was Goldmud Railway. Now this map looks absolutely massive. The seven flags for a start, which means that we're, we're probably going to see gameplay similar to some of the armored kill maps in this level. Lots of vehicles, tanks, artillery, jets, helicopters, the whole shebang. Also we can see now that there's probably two types of jet per team on the bigger conquest maps. One jet that's based on air to air combat and another that's based on air to ground. And we also see what looks like a jet dropping a bomb, which is awesome because bombs haven't been in the Battlefield series since Battlefield 2. Like I said, massive trailer. Go and check it out in full quality. Link is in the description. 
Next up, we've got plenty of new interviews that have been flowing around online. The first one is an interview with Zinto. This was posted on GameSpot. This is about level design and dynamic environments in Battlefield 4. Of course, he's at the TGS, the Tokyo Game Show, at the moment. And uh, yeah, nice little interview. Link is in the description if you want to go and check that out. Also, we've got an interview with Alan Kurt. He's the lead core gameplay designer on Battlefield 4. He talks about various aspects of customization in the game, all the things that you can do to your gun. And he also goes on to talk about an officially announced, I guess, tier reloading. So this is a system where if you've already taken a magazine out of your gun and you have to switch to your pistol to shoot someone, you don't then have to start the, the animation for your primary weapon from the beginning because you've already taken that magazine out. Why should you have to do it again? All you're going to do is continue the animation and put the other mag back in. So that's going to save a lot of time and throw in a few interesting uh, gameplay perks. Going back to dinosaurs briefly, this might mean absolutely nothing, but I thought it was interesting, so I'd throw it in here anyways. Vincent, the new community manager, posted this picture on Twitter. So I'm guessing he updated this from work at DICE, and it says, This is a Velociraptor free workplace. It has proudly been X days since the last incident. What does it mean? Does it mean we're not going to get dinosaurs? Does it mean we are going to get dinosaurs? Does it mean I can ride on top of a T-Rex firing fucking lasers at a Diplodocus? I don't know. Dinosaurs are cool. But yeah, there we go. That about covers it for today, guys. I just wanted to give you a couple of updates and stuff that I've been up to as well. I thought you might be interested. I'm working on two new Battlefield-related songs at the moment. One of them is a new collaboration with Boy in a Band. Uh, I don't want to reveal the title of the song because it's going to be very hotly discussed and it's probably going to kick up some drama. But we worked really hard on it and I've actually spent a load of money buying props for it. So it's going to be good. And I can't wait to release that. We're working on that right now and we're going to be filming it and recording it hopefully next week. The other song is a Battlefield love song. Oh, isn't that nice? Which I've been working on with uh, Abby, who's the girl that sang in the Dumb BF3 Dumb Ways to Die music video that I released, um, I think it was earlier this year, like around March, that sort of time. So that's cool, and that'll be coming out as well. Also, I've switched up my uh, PC gaming hardware a little bit. I've got some new components in my PC, and I'm also using a new headset and a new mouse, so I was thinking about doing an updated setup video. Uh, you guys always ask me for that sort of thing, so I think I'm going to get that done. There's plenty of events for me coming up as well. Some I can talk about, some I can't talk about, but all of them involve game capture, for unreleased things and unreleased titles so i'm going to be posting all that sort of stuff soon so look out for that on the channel finally check out the squad video from yesterday if you missed that one lots of effort went into that so if you click on the annotation there you can go to that video and give it a watch if you don't know what the squad is basically it's my version of level cap squad up we team up myself, X Factor, Matimio, and Level Cap every week, and we play some Battlefield 3 together. There's a lot of funny parts, there's a lot of epic moments, and uh, yeah, go and check it out. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this one. Have a nice weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.